Is this, yeah, can you hear me all okay at the back? Pardon? <laughs> a couple more coming in. All right, well, I'm going to make a start because um, I've got quite a few slides to get through. And it, last time I did this, it took me around about 25 minutes. So uh, I'm going to have to talk a little bit quickly in places. We good to go? So, yeah? Cool. OK. Welcome to CPAN Testers. Uh, talk that I'm doing today is basically about the, the ecosystem of the, of the whole uh, CPAN Testers um, process from submitting talks right through to getting uh, data out at the very end uh, to use for other purposes. Before I go into any depth, uh, I just want to emphasize the fact that this, this talk is not about the CPAN testers' websites. I did that one last year. Um, it's not about C how to be a CPAN tester. There's plenty of documentation on the wiki, and uh, there's other slides elsewhere that uh, can help you with that. Um, it's not about how to fix your broken code, um, and it's not about um, or why your code is broken. Um, it's also not the full story. I'm only going to look at certain aspects of the process. Um, there are lots of other uh, pieces of code that are used throughout the, uh, the process and other processes uh, that you may want to look at and can be seen on the development site. This talk is mainly going to be about the, uh, the processes used in the core uh, uses of CPAN testers. Um, and it's more about contributing code. So I'm looking at uh, areas that if you want to get involved in CPAN testers, these are the various uh, code repositories to look at. And lastly, we're going to look at some of the APIs that are available if you want to manipulate them in any way. So first off, we have the smokers. And essentially, we have uh, three sets of smokers. Uh, the first set um, uh, here is CPAN and CPAN Reporter. Although not the first, it's probably the most prolific. And essentially, it's a plugin into CPAN to allow anyone installing tests uh, to submit tests uh, to the metabase. Um, but in, in addition, you can, there are other smoker uh, automation, automated bots that, you, that are available as well that allow you to uh, run uh, completely automated. In addition, we have CPAN Plus and CPAN Plus Yak Smoke, which is uh, written by Bingos. And essentially, this is just a, a, another version of the CPAN, CPAN reporter style of, uh, of testing. Um, essentially, CPAN Plus was the first one to actually have an automated script to send reports. And this idea was just kind of built on top of all of that. In addition, uh, Bingo's has also written Metabase, Metabase Relay D, which can be quite useful because when you're actually testing on a particular environment, you don't necessarily want to install all the, uh, the additional requirements uh, things like Moose, etc., um, on a particular platform, you want to try and keep it as clean as possible. Metabase Relay D allows you to do your testing and send your reports to another server, which would then do all the, the nice transport layer off to the, the Metabase server. Lastly, of the smokers, we actually have CPAN M or CPAN minus. And although it's not completely finished yet, we also have App CPAN Testers, which is a uh, an early version of a CPAN testers uh, reporting script that will work with CPAN minus. Um, it's written by uh, a guy called Bruno, and uh, it's currently experimental. Um, but if you want to have a look at it and have a play with it, by all means do. Moving on, we've got the transport. And essentially what this entails is allowing the reports, or the, the smokers, to send their reports, uh, package them up, and then send them to the, the metabase. And there's three parts to this. First of all is the CPAN, uh, sorry, it's a tester, test reporter. And this looks at the, uh, the report that's being sent to it via the smoker, and then packages it into a, 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 a metadata, metadata hash that it then sends to the, the transporter. From the transporter, before it sends it to the metabase, we now have uh, a piece of software that actually tries to look at more in-depth information, usually about the platform, not necessarily about the report itself, although eventually we're looking at um, extracting information from the report into a more of the, the, the meta hash. 
So moving over, we've got the CPAN testers report, which essentially pulls in lots and lots of information. Um, this is probably, if you're interested in getting more out of the CPAN testers reports, this is probably uh, one of the first ones to actually look at to sort of understand what's uh, being extracted at the moment and what else could be extracted and to interpolate it further. Uh, in addition to this, we have CPAN Tester's Common Client, which again is a bit experimental and it's not quite finished, but essentially this is going to be a, a conduit for when the smoker has sent the test report, this actually works with all of them because there's a lot of common information across the three at the moment. And Braino has been, been looking at this and essentially wants to bring all of those common elements uh, into a common, consistent way of reporting. Uh, the MetaBase fact is essentially a part of the hash, the meta hash that we use uh, to identify various attributes about the report or the environment that we're using. And one of those is an example is CPAN testers fact platform info. info. There are others, and if you look on CPAN, um, you'll, you'll find quite a few. This moves us on to the MetaBase. And essentially, the MetaBase is our repository of all these test reports in terms of the, the hash that we provide it. Essentially, when we started all of this, um, we had text, uh, uh, plain text reports that were just stored uh, in an NNTP environment and we sent over email. Uh, we've kind of um, realized that, that there was a big limitation with all of that. We've now got rid of it and we're storing everything in the MetaBase. As a consequence of that, we're actually storing this at the moment in a, no, a no MySQL, sorry, a NoSQL database, which is actually simple DB in Amazon, but we're looking to move towards uh, MongoDB uh, at some point in the future. This allows, will allow us to do a lot more uh, with the searching abilities that we want to do. Uh, at the moment, it's a bit limiting for us, um, but essentially with all the facts that we're generating within a test report, we want to be able to allow people to search specific uh, areas that they actually want to look at. So things like um, certain switches that are on or the kind of environment that they're a particular a set of test reports are being run under um, so that they can analyze them and see if there's common elements to problems or uh, well, absolutely anything. Particularly for, for CPAN authors, it's been a, a, a constant uh, request. So that's, that's an area we're going to be, be looking at soon. Moving on from that, we have the generator. And essentially what this, this does, um, this kind of started life just by trying to take a text report and separating it into all the, uh, what is now we term the facts. Um, initially, w this was all just various metadata and very, very simplistic. These days, with the, the way we have the metabase, we've got a bit more control over it. But at the same stage, the generator is basically still pulling out all that basic information. If you hear people refer to CPAN stats and the metabase, this is the difference. The metabase is holding the full report, whereas CPAN stats is actually holding a very brief, uh, quick identifiers for the CPAN tester report. So this actually separates it out into the storage portion, so we actually store it into a reports database and a CPAN stats database. Uh, and at that point, that's when we start looking at the various APIs. The first one is probably the most, uh, the one that you're most familiar with, which is the CPAN testers uh, reports website. And essentially what happens is we have a, uh, a set of builder uh, applications that run in the background and we'll create all the HTML files, the JSON files, etc. And essentially to actually access that, you can either view the HTML files um, if you're accessing them via the static site, they will be slightly out of date as they get updated fairly infrequently. Um, but on the, the, the dynamic site, you'll get the, the instant response. Um, in addition to that, if you're actually looking for um, some way of passing these, um, a number of websites are already using this. Is you've got the, um, the CPAN testers WW reports parser, which passes the actual JSON information and provides it in a common way that you can then use for other purposes. For example, uh, the analysis site uses it, the uh, CPAN matrix site uses it, as well as uh, searchcpan.org. Um, we then have an additional API, which is based on something that uh, Adam Kennedy wanted. Uh, he wanted to analyze how releases were being uh, provided uh, support for various platforms. 
So he wanted to look at not only the t in terms of the OS uh, that was being used, but he also wanted to look at whether it was a patched version of Perl that's being tested, a proper version of Perl, um, and various other little things. And essentially, we created the release database to allow him to do that. It's essentially a very quick snapshot of various inf release information um, to try and you know, do some analysis on it. Um, we then have the CPAN testers uh, reports, query reports. At some point, this is probably going to change its name because uh, it does get a bit confusing. Um, essentially, what this is doing is allowing you to search the CPAN stats database and pull out all the reports that you may be missing. Um, some of you who read the, the blog may be aware of we occasionally keep getting problems with the, the SQL database. Essentially, we get in um, a lot of issues with memory um, and there's disk faults or all sorts of things going on and we, we haven't been able to track them down. But essentially, it means that some of the, the searching that you do in an SQL database, uh, it isn't quite complete. The other side to that as well is the fact that the, the, the metabase, sorry, the, the CPAN stats data, database in my SQL Lite is several gig, and people who are using it are downloading it, um, and it's taking forever. Um, I mean, essentially, it's, uh, it's quite a drain on the resources. So uh, uh, we did move the build, so it wasn't building so often. Um, but essentially, this now is trying to replace that, and certainly with things like the analysis site, um, which we've moved over to using this kind of uh, parser, so you've got a lot more control. You're not having to download the whole database. You just catch up on the ones you've missed. So you can then build your own database, whether it's in a, a SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, whatever it happens to be. You can do what you want with it then. Um, following on from that, um, this is a first um, version. Um, essentially, I'm going to look at building this in much the similar way that we have with the CPAN testers, sorry, the CPAN stats uh, one, I just back there, um, where you can actually just build on what you already have. Currently, this just returns, you give it a, an ID or a, a GUI, um, the, this will actually uh, return you a specific report. But I want to actually build on that so that it will return you all the information for any reports that you might have missed. So you, again, you can build up your own database and you can manipulate it how you want. So that's essentially the, the, the process, is looking at the full ecosystem. Um, if you actually want to look at the, the image I've got there, I've tried to kind of give it a bit of a flow. Um, at some point, I want to try and build up this image so that you can actually see where other pieces fit in. Um, but you, you can download this from the slides, and the slides will be online at some point. Um, but I'm also planning to update it with the CPAN testers uh, module with all this kind of information. At the moment, the, the information in there is quite basic, but I wanted to try and uh, explain more about those, the, some of the things I've mentioned today, all the, the, the individual um, elements that make up the whole process. Um, and if you did want to look at some of the websites, I know a number of people comment to me every now and again saying, oh, can it do this, can it do that, I want to add this feature or whatever. Um, pretty much all the websites are now online, and certainly the, the major ones, if you want to have a play with them. So we have the CPAN testers main report site. Uh, you've got the statistics site, the matrix site, which is written by Slaven. Um, we also have the analysis site, which is written by um, Andreas. And then we've got the uh, CPAN dependencies, which um, t again takes a lot of the Im API information that we're providing to analyze how the uh, dependencies work within a particular CPAN distribution. And that's been created by Dave Cantrell. Um, just before I finish, um, a little word from our sponsors. Um, I'm working for, for WebFusion these days, so if anybody's interested in uh, a job in the UK, uh, please come and talk to me. Um, and that's it. Has anyone got any questions? I've run over and through that quite quickly, but uh, blinded by science. Um, the releases stuff. Um, the, the releases, yeah? Yeah, essentially, it's, it's, it's kind of, um, it's looking at the way that the, the releases 
for a particular distribution are, are worked out so that it's on particular OSs, whether it's patched Perl. Is that what, is that what you kind of meant? Because it, it kind of it looks at... There, there wasn't a, you know, that list of what probably is the exact thing that's updated by hand. It... So... If, if you have, um, you know, a new port of Perl, mm -hmm. Test yep. It will just start showing up. So basically, you just want a way to search out a particular version of Perl, what's passing or not. Is that what you? Yeah. Yeah. No, that that was something we we're looking at for the metabase search, so that you can do things like that. Because oh. that's that's that. I say that's been asked several times in various different ways. So you're looking at it from that point of view. We we get asked from a variety of ways. Um, I mean, for example, Tim Bunce came up with an idea of how to look for DBI issues, and it, we, had, we had to say, look, we can't do it at the moment. But essentially, he wants to look at that lower level metabase. De Sorry? <laughs> it's mainly, I, I know Dave started that kind of search engine uh, side of things. He was writing it in Catalyst, but uh, it, he just didn't have time to finish it. Plus, the fact that it, it feeds into. Uh, the simple DB, which is on Amazon, um, which is a bit of a pain at the moment. So once we move to the MongoDB, then I suspect a lot of that software will then be on CPAN for people to play with. Any other questions? Well, I think I got through that quicker than I did <laughs> the other day. Yes, go on. Yes. Yep. If I could. It's the top one. It, it produces both the dynamics pages and the uh, static pages. Basically, there's a builder that sits in the background, and it will go through the cycle uh, and update as quickly as it can. Um, but it doesn't. It's, it's less frequent than the the dynamic site, um, but it does update pretty quickly usually. But yeah, so if you wanted to add any features or anything like that, that they're the places to go and have a look at and see what you can do. It's on GitHub, it's on CPAN, and you can go and look at MetaPan. But yeah, so if you want to grab it, most of this stuff is pretty much all on, on GitHub uh, these days. There are, I think, which one is it? Uh, yeah, Andreas's one is the only one that's on a private Git at the moment. Not at the moment. Um, Please do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we may at some point in the future, who's to say? But uh, yeah, at the moment, GitHub works for us, so yeah. Well, I think my 20, 20 minutes is up now, so thanks very much for listening, and I hope you get something out of it, and I, I hope we see some more code contributions in the future. Thanks very much.